Sharma, scientist CSIO. So I request all the centers to please call your participants. We are going to start the session within five minutes. Introduction. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, introduction uh, I have to give or Uh, hello everyone so i am deepak sharma i am deepak sharma scientist uh, from csir central scientific Instrument organization and currently i am working in the area of uh, icd and my research area is wireless sensor network earlier i have worked with Tata Consultancy Services Limited. I work on various mobile and base station simulators. I have also worked on satellite constellation simulators. So today I am going to discuss application of wireless and mobile communication and upcoming research areas. So I would be starting with wireless communication introduction. Then I will be taking mobile communication. Then I will be discussing wireless sensor networks in detail. Then I will be discussing some other wireless communication technologies like Bluetooth, WLAN, etc. And at last, I will be discussing the most talked about technology, Internet of Things. So when we talk about wireless communication, so it, it's quite a wide topic. So talk about mobile communication, 2G, 3G, 4G. We are having a lot many short range communication technologies like Bluetooth, NFC, RFID. We are having satellite based communication systems like satellite televisions, GPS, etc. And we are having a lot many other technologies like ZigBee, WLAN, etc. If we talk about the changing scenario of communication, so since 1896, when Marconi demonstrated 
the wireless telegraphy and if we talk about last two decades we have seen lot many technologies like mobile communication zigbee etc and today we are living in the age of lte so this is a typical wireless technologies landscape on the left hand side it's showing depending on the range for example pan is personal area network which is meant for normally cable replacement then we are having wireless lans wireless metropolitan area networks and wans so pan we are having technologies like zigbee bluetooth in wan we are having w lan we are having like wifi then wimax and wman and we are having mobile communication technologies uh, which is basically the, what we have shown here is gsm evolution like gsm gprsh eonts hsdp and lt we will be discussing these techniques technologies in detail the second thing is bit rate so all the application are going more data intensive so for example when we talk about lt so why are people are going for lte because it can support higher data rates so now we will start with mobile communication this is a simple diagram of mobile communication evolution mobile communication is started with analog fdma then there were multiple paths one path was is95 which was based on cdma technology and if we talk about india you must have seen reliance communication earlier work was based on cdma 2000 then another group is is136 site which is later evolved 1x do and the another one is gsm which is global services systems and mobile communication so the earliest generation was 1g which was analog then we were having gsm tdma gsm which was gsm 2g which was based on tdma then edge then umts which was based on wcdma and today we have lte what we call 4g which is based on ofdma so if we talk about first generation so it is started at early 80s it was analog ams was the first such communication system and if we talk about the application perspective then the application was to support voice call but even the was quality was poor it was having a poor battery life the sizes of the phone was quite large there were no security and very limited capacity limited capacity because it was based on fdma and second generation which was based on tdma so we were able to support more number of users in the same channel so it was launched in 90s the signal was digital it was having better quality and capacity if we talk about new feature than short message servicing and multimedia message servicing was introduced at that period but still the data speed was quite low and it was not able to support data intensive applications in the bottom right side i have shown a typical 2g system where your mobile station communicate with the base trans receiver system this which consist of your rf part as well and your base trans receiver system connect with the base station controller and base station controller further connect with mobile switching center msc and which is having other components like your home locator register visitor locator register etc so when we are moving towards 3g there are multiple technologies which were between 2g and 3g for example one technology was hscst high speed circuit switch data then we saw gprs general packet radio system 
which was having data speed up to 115 kbps then we saw patch enhanced data rate for gsm evolution and it was able to support the data rate up to 384 kbps so if we talk about technically what was the difference then gprs was using qpsk while edge was using 8psk so it was able to support more number of bits in the same channel so due to higher data rates we were able to support the functions like sending receiving the email messages mobile web browsing at that time it was based on web wireless access protocol and lot many other features was also incorporated into the mobiles like cameras etc so 3g was introduced in late 2000s the technology was based on wcdma which is stand for wideband cdma and it was meant to support up to 2 mbps of data rate under different scenario it was supposed to support different data rates like under vehicular scenario it was supposed to support 144 kbps and for indoor scenario it was support to it was supposed to support up to 2 mbps so with 3g we were able to get lot many new features so it could provide faster communication we were able to access high speed web it was more secure new applications was were introduced like video conferencing video calls gaming audio video streaming and like your purchasing application were also introduced in that period so if you are going from 3g to 4g there are number of entrants like hspa is one of them hspa stand for high speed packet access it is basically combination of two technologies one is high speed download packet access and high speed uplink packet access and today we are living in the age of lte which is considered as fourth generation or 4g it can support up to speed up to 100 mbps actually the actual limit depend on what kind of mobile handset you are using for example if your handset can support up to 4 cross 4 mimo it may be able to give you better speed as compared to 2 cross 2 mimo it is more secure it is high speed and it has high capacity and if we talk about what is the major difference between the 3g or earlier mobile communication generations and 4g then 4g is all ip what does it mean it means that in earlier cases we were having circuit switched data to voice call and later we we were having packet switched data for data users internet data users however in 4g it is all ip each and every application is based on packet switching that's why when we talk about 4g the voice call itself is supported by voice over lte so with 4g we are having a lot many applications which can support data intensive users like mobile multimedia you can access data intensive applications anytime anywhere global mobility support integrated wireless solution and customized personal services this is a typical diagram of lte an lte as i was saying like if we talk about the peak data rates so in downlink one if 150 mbps is supported by if your ue is category 4 it means it is supposed to support 2 cross 2 mimo and that too at 20 megahertz bandwidth in lte you can assign your user multiple bit slot as mentioned on the very top row for example you can give your user 20 megahertz 15 megahertz 10 megahertz 
and depending on your bandwidth, it will be able to support higher data rates. Then, if we talk about the UE category 5, which is based on 4 cross 4 MIMO, you can support up to 300 Mbps in downlink, and in uplink, we can support 75 Mbps at 20 megahertz bandwidth. If we talk about the modulation scheme, then we are using OFDMA in downlink and SCFDMA in uplink. So the, if the question is why we are using SCFDMA in uplink, because peak to power, peak to average power ratio can be better supported by SCFDMA. So if we talk about application perspective, so hardware has been involved and we are having improved network bandwidth. And today, you can see lot many mobile applications. If we talk about one such case like fitness trackers. So fitness trackers, we are having lot many smartwatches which can sense n number of parameters from our body and send this data to your mobile com mobile com mobile and that mobile can further store it on cloud this is a typical scenario in lot many other applications for example body area network based applications this is the evolution of wireless communication what we have just discussed so up to 4g we can say we can support up to 300 mbps and if we talk about the future then LTE Advance is already in line and people are now talking about 5G for which millimeter waves are to be exploited. So if we talk about from 3G to say LTE Advance, what are the technologies which are playing major role? Then one is MIMO, multiple input, multiple output antenna technology. So if you can support higher order MIMO, you can achieve higher data rates. And another one is go for higher order modulations. For example, earlier you were using QPSK, then in Edge we use 8PSK, then 16 QAM and 64 QAM can even support even higher data rates. So now we will move towards wireless sensor networks. Wireless sensor networks is amalgamation of sensing, communication, and computing technologies. So wireless sensor network consists of a large number of sensor nodes, which can sense some physical phenomena and communicate the information to your sync node, which can be further connected to, say, internet, where you can do your all your analytics and do some control actions. These are some WSN application scenarios. So wireless sensor networks have lot many applications. So for example, in military applications, it can be used for detecting and monitoring forces, equipment and ammunition. It can be used for battle damage assessment. It can be used for nuclear, biological, chemical attack detection and reconnaissance. In environmental applications, it can be used in precision agriculture, detection of environmental conditions, for example, forest fire and flood, etc. It can be used for sensor network for observing wildlife. It has a lot many applications and health related areas like tracking and monitoring of doctor, patients, drug administration in hospitals, then structural health monitoring under home and building application is very interesting area, home factory automation, and it is also an integral part of smart city projects. And there are various other applications like vehicle tracking, detection, interactive toys, and internet of things. We will be discussing internet of things in detail at the last of this session. So we can have different sensors 
depending on our applications. So in wireless sensor network, depending on different applications, we can have different sensors. For example, if we want to measure physical properties, then we can have pressure, temper temperature, humidity, and flow-based sensors. For motion properties, we can have position velocity, angular velocity, and acceleration-based sensor. For contact properties, we can have a strain, force, torque-based sensor. Similarly, for biochemicals, we can have biochemical agents. So the application of wireless sensor networks is based on our imagination. Depending on different situations, we can choose different sensors and fetch the data from the environment or the conditions from where we want to fetch the data and we can analyze and generate the results. This is a typical wireless sensor node architecture. It's having four more units four main units. The first one is the sensing unit. Second one is processing, then transceiver and power unit. Your sensor unit consists of a sensor and analog to digital converse, converter because sensors are generally analog in nature. Then we are having processing unit, which is consists of processor as well as storage for algorithms as well as local storage. Then we are having trans receiver, which is generally RF in nature. Then power unit is there, which supports all the remaining units. There are three blocks which are shown in dotted lines. These are auxiliary blocks, which may or may not be present depending on our application. For example, location finding system, maybe a GPS chip, a mobilizer required if you want your node to be mobilized in different conditions and power generators are energy harvesting systems. If we talk about the research area in wireless sensor networks, then there are different sensor and transducer designs, node design, system design, protocols, as well as energy harvesting. We will be discussing algorithms for wireless sensor networks in detail. So what are the influencing factor when we talk about wireless sensor networks. So very first thing is application area. Because WSN our application is specific. For example, if you want to develop a wireless sensor network for mobile environments, then it may have some different requirement as compared to a stationary home and industry automation. Similarly, how you are going to deploy the wireless sensor network is also going to change the design factors of your wireless sensor network. You, whether you want to deploy them randomly or you have an option to deploy them deterministically. Similarly, what are the bandwidths and error rate you want from your wireless sensor network? It's, that is again depend what kind of application you are looking, uh, what kind of application uh, you are having in your hand. So there are some hardware constraints which make design of various, uh, which make design of wireless sensor network related aspect quite complex. Like it is very limited in battery power and it's having limited storage and limited computational power. Another factor is cost of devices. Generally, we deploy wireless sensor networks where the sensor nodes are deployed in a large number. So we always try to minimize the cost of devices. Then transmission.
हेलो 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 ओके मैम फाइन so sorry so there was some communication issue okay okay so we were discussing different network topologies and wireless sensor network so generally we support star and cluster t but what make wireless sensor networks distinct from the other is mesh for example if you want to communicate your packets from the switch to the bulbs so it may have a particular path but what happens if you node die then it should be able to send the packets from the different paths so this is what achieved by the mesh networking if we talk about the wireless sensor network protocol stack it looks similar to your osi stack however you can see three planes power management plane mobility management plane and task management plane so what does it mean it shows that we are supposed to consider power management mobility management as well as task management under all different layers of our model so when we talk about physical layer so you consider frequency selection modulation schemes your trans receiver design data encryption and propagation effects propagation effects for example if you are using or if you are considering a free space model then the losses will be d to d square and if you are considering a multi path model then the losses will be d to the power 4 then your data link layer is how you are going to access the channel generally it use csma ca carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance and the other error control techniques like forward error correction control codes automatic repeat request codes etc are also implemented at this particular layer then network layer is 
one of very interesting layer because we consider routing at this layer. We will be discussing routing uh, in coming slides. The data aggregation as well as the topology related aspects are also considered on this particular layer. Your transport layer is uh, integration of internal and external network is considered on transport layer. And your application layer is depend on your application. If we talk about what are different standards in wireless sensor networks, then IEEE 802.15.4 is one such standard. It, can, it is basically considering physical and MAC layer only. Zigbee 6 low pan are other standards. Even the commercial devices are available for Zigbee and 6 low pan. Wireless hearts are, is also there, and there are a lot many proprietary solutions from different companies. This is a protocol stack for 802.15.4. So as I just told you that 802.15.4 is considering lower two layers that is phi and mac so at phi layer you are considering packet generation packet reception data transparency power management at mac you are considering channel acquisition contention management frame security and error control however at upper layers you can either go for zigbee or six lopen or you can develop your own protocol stack these are some operating bands 802.15.4 is generally works in ISM bands and it uses CSM SCA. Data rate is that it supports up to 250 kbps and amplitude and phase shift keys is used as modulation. On the right hand side, I have shown some commercially available products. Then Zigbee. So Zigbee is based on I 802.15.4 standard. 802.15.4 is basically Phi and Mac layer, and upper layers are developed by the Zigbee Alliance, which is consists of lot many companies like Philips, Siemens, etc. It can support the data rate up to 900 kbps, and the Zigbee chips are available in the market. Uh, even you can use XB based Zigbee chips for your project works or research works. So if we talk about Zigbee network, so it's easy to install and maintain. It can support mesh. It's reliable. It's scalable up to thousands of nodes. It's low cost. It's having long battery life. It can support up to years on AA battery. And security is AES128. On the right hand side is the arch network architecture of Zigbee network. So in Zigbee, you are having end devices, Zigbee router and Zigbee coordinator. Your end devices are where you are attaching your sensors. You can attach your sensors at router level as well. The difference between the end device and Zigbee router is that only route and can participate in routing process. That's why you can see the end device and devices are connected to the router and router is further able to communicate with other routers and coordinator. Your coordinator can have a gateway functionality as well if you want to connect it to different networks or internet. If we talk about application scenarios of Zigbee, then these are some Applications, for example, this is one hotel in Las Vegas where more than one lakh Zigbee devices has been implemented. Similarly, in Hampshire City Council, Hampshire, UK, which is having 90,000 connected street lights. There are a lot many other Zigbee applications and they have developed different profiles for different applications. For example, they are having profiles for Zigbee home automation smart energies, telecommunication, healthcare, uh, radio frequency for consumer electronics, smart lighting, building automation, green power, retail services, etc. On the right hand side, I have shown some application that, for example, it has been used in smart parking, smart home environment, 
top right side top right side i have shown one very interesting commercially available uh device which is called flips hue these are xb modules which support zigbee and which are low cost devices and can be used in research and project related areas so xb pro can support mesh it is having higher range as compared to xb series 1 then six low pan is another standard so instead of zigbee six low pan is based on if we can assign the ipv6 addresses to your nodes and then the nodes will be addressable over the internet so as you can see that ipv6 over the low power wireless personal area network has been shown in this picture these are some some commercially available devices is for 6 low pan the operating system is normally tiny os or quantiki these are very lightweight operating systems actually this is one commercially available uh product called wasmod so it's a kind of single board computer where you have attached a 6 low pan uh for wireless communication so depending on your different applications you can attach different sensors on this particular module and these module can send the data to your gateway and your gateway can be connected to your internet where you can store the data on cloud and use that data in different application for example mobile apps etc this is another uh wsn base kit the in the middle one we are having a coordinator then we are having two routers and two and devices actually it is having a built in temperature and humidity sensor so if you are pressing the fingers then the reading are changing that's it's what that's what it's want to show so if we talk about wireless sensor network algorithms so there are lot many areas for example node positioning how we can place the nodes so that the life of wireless sensor network can be improved then node localization node localization means how to find the location of a particular node one way is to embed the gps chip but that's because the gps itself is based on triangularization then if we are having some reference points then can we develop our own localization protocol that is a challenging area then energy efficient routing is another area data aggregation cross layer optimization heterogeneity consideration is also an upcoming area for example if the nodes are not same they are having different initial energy level they are having different antennas then the algorithm should be able to optimize in that particular scenario the network security quality of service the another interesting area is network dynamics it means your nodes are mobile then integration of sensor network with wired network like internet is also a new area to be explored there are various wsn simulators like ns2 netsim omnet or you can simulate these algorithms in matlab as well if we talk about routing so routing is the selection of a path from your source node to sync node so how you can transmit the information from your source nodes to the sync the one method could be you can directly send your information to the sync that is the direct transmission and your losses will be r to the power n depending on what a uh, model you are considering free space or multipath then another one is minimum transmission energy so in that case what you do you try to minimize d square loss of complete paths the another method is static clustering 
So what you can do, you can divide your nodes among different clusters and the nodes are supposed to send their data to one representative called cluster head and cluster head further send the data to the base station. So if we see these three different scenarios, so in first case, the indirect routing case, as these, due to D squared loss, the nodes which are farther from the base station will die first. In the second scenario, nodes closer to the base station will die first because they will always because they will be always considered in the communication. The last one is static clustering. Because the cluster heads will be communicating each and every time, so cluster heads are going to die first. So, as a case study, I want to discuss one protocol that how these three problems were resolved through one routing protocol called Leech which is stand for low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy. So in this particular protocol, they considered dynamic cluster formation, means the clusters are not static. Similarly, cluster head, cluster head itself are rotated, means the every node will get a chance to become a cluster head. So it's self-organizing adaptive clustering protocol and it can evenly distribute the energy load among the sensors. So they simulated this particular algorithm. So this is a design of experiment part of this algorithm. So they have used first order radio model and these are the parameters. For example, they randomly deployed 100 number of nodes and 100 meter by 100 meter area and their base station is 75 meter above the that is square area. So this protocol is having two different phases. The one is setup phase and the second was in steady state phase. In setup phase, we organize the clusters and in steady state phase, we transfer the data. So how the clusters are formed? So for cluster head selection, we are having a probability and that probability considers the round number as well as it considers those nodes which has not been considered as cluster head in that particular round. So it gives a fair chance to all the nodes to become a cluster head. So once the cluster head has been selected, it advertises a cluster head selection an uh, advertisement message to the neighboring nodes and the surrounding nodes decide which cluster to join based on the signal strength of these messages. Once the cluster head has been decided, then cluster head assigned a TDMA schedule to its members and each and every node transmit only in their assigned time slot. So all the nodes have the same energy after n upon k round. That's why that's how the energy is equally distributed. So this is a typical leech protocol. So first we decide the cluster heads. So it broadcasts the advertisement message. Then node transmit it memberships. So you have formed the cluster now. So now the head broadcasts the schedules. Means the nodes are having their own time slot to send their data. So node transmit the data in their assigned time slots and cluster head compresses the data to data aggregation and send it to base station. And once this complete process, the process is restarted with the selection of new cluster heads. So these are the results of this particular algorithm. So you can see there was a major improvement over existing techniques like MTE and static clustering. Now we will be discussing other wireless communication technologies. If you have any question related to mobile communication and wireless sensor network, please ask.
any query from the center? I think we could show you. Any queries from any of the center right now? Okay, I think then we can go. Okay, so now we will discuss some other wireless communication technologies. So another technology is Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is basically a cable replacement RF technology, which is a low cost, short range, 10 meter and extendable up to 100 meter. It works in ISM band 2.4 gigahertz, and it can support up to 50 Mbps speed for version 5. And it is widely supported by telecommunication, PC, consumer electronics companies. And it is having lot many applications in healthcare, fitness equipments, security, uh, home entertainment industries, etc. So now we are having a new standard of Bluetooth as well, which is known as Bluetooth Smart. Earlier it was known as BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, which is more energy efficient as compared to its earlier version, which is commercialized as Bluetooth only. Other technologies, if we consider then mostly used, the, the technology which mostly used by us is wireless LAN, which is also a kind of cable replacement RF technology. And it is based on 802.11 standards. It provides a wireless connectivity for interconnecting computing resources at the local level of an organization. These are some standards, for example, 802.11b, 11a, 11g. So these are uh, like depending on some different standards, it can support up to different different schemes. Another interesting technology is satellite communication systems. Satellites can cover very large areas. And it satellites even can have different orbit heights. For example, we can have geos, or we can have leos, or even we can have meos. So geo stands for geosynchronous or geostationary satellites. Leo stands for low orbit earth, low earth orbit satellites. Geo satellites are those satellites which are having same time period as the rotation of Earth. So if we talk about geostationary satellites, then geostationary satellites are those satellites which are geosynchronous satellites and which are on the equatorial plane so that they remain stationary as compared to a particular location or Earth. 
then low earth satellites are satellites which are uh, which are in the space at quite low height for example remote sensing satellites are leo further normally the leo are polar satellites what does it mean it means that they are not they are actually rot uh, taking their orbits perpendicular to the equatorial plane so they are used in navigation communication weather earth observation etc if we talk about i want to consider here two very interesting case studies one of ये वाला मैम मैम ये एक्चुअली ना ये शेयर नहीं होता फाइव तो आना पड़ेगा स्लाइड शो में करते हैं फिर होता है हो गया मैम that is an interesting application of satellite communication in mobile telephony with assisted gps earlier we used to have satellite receivers so what was the problem with those receivers if you want to implement a gps based chip in mobile 
then when you on it first time then it's supposed to get the information directly from the satellites and depending on the situation of different satellite that fetching that information can take up to minutes so mobile operator came with a solution that the initial information of the satellite was provided by mobile operators means mobile towers and the mobile phone was already know that what all satellites are currently available and it can directly communicate with them so the time to first fix that is the time which is required when you switch on your gps receiver and you get the fix was reduced considerably so this is a amalgamation of different technologies this is a comparison of some of the technologies we have just discussed as you can see like your wifi can support higher data rates sigbi can support low data rate however the power consumption is quite low in sigbi now we will move towards another topic called internet of things so internet of things and vision any time any place anything scenario and the gartner which is a leading it research and advisory company has forecasted that approximately 6.4 billion connected things are already there in 2016 which is 30% up from 2015 and they have predicted that the number will reach to 20.8 billion by 2020 and if we talk about the application scenarios then smart agriculture environmental monitoring and forecasting vehicular automation is smart transport healthcare and wellness home building and industrial automations these are just few of them this is how you can deploy an iot iot based system for example you can fetch the information from the sensors or send the control signals to your actuators based on wireless communication technologies we have just discussed like zigbee if you want to deploy them in wireless sensor network network based technologies you can use 2g 3g 4g or mobile communication based technologies or you can use ethernet as well but definitely it's not wireless or you can use six low pan rfid zb fit etc then once the information is reached to the gateway then there are some protocols like you can use rest uh, which is meant for uh, which is uh, which means and the another one is mqtt which is uh, message queue telemetry and transport then using these protocols you can store your data on clouds and further fetch the data from cloud from your mobile applications or web applications this is one agriculture scenario this is one iot application scenario in agriculture sector for example you can fetch the information from fields you can fetch the information from satellites related to weather etc you can fetch the information of agriculture machineries and based on these information you can take decisions as well as uh you can use it for monitoring and control and you can predict the market etc this is a conceptual iot framework at the lowest level uh, you can see the wireless sensor network in cloud computing there are different uh, frameworks like software as a services platform as a services or infrastructure as a services your clouds can be used for visualization computation analytics and storage and from cloud you can use the information in different applications like surveillance infrastructure monitoring environment monitoring health monitoring etc these are some other iot scenarios for example 
you press a doorbell button and a camera take your picture and email sms and tweet so that even if you are not at your home you will be able to receive the information similarly once there is a fire and the fire alarm is on it can send the email and sms another scenario could be as you are having lot many apps which can fetch your location information so your location information is detected and once you are reaching your home your presence is detected and your ac switches on automatically another scenario could be your security systems which can be accessed on internet i would like to also add there are few devices which are quite cheap like arduino raspberry pi intel edison etc which are quite cheap and another thing is they are modular like you can directly program them so you can use them in your projects as well as in your research work so that's all i would like to say thank you so if you have any query if you have any question please ask टेकिंग मोर रिसोर्सेस in terms of energy as well as in terms of data that's why if you are using 4g services that may lead to higher data uses as well as your battery may also be consumed in less time reduce the power consumption okay you want to ask how we will how we can reduce the power consumption so very first thing what you can do uh like you can see the task running on your mobile okay and if those task are not the mandatory one or so what you can do you can if you can kill those task or you can optimize those task then the power consumption could be reduced another thing is like if you are keeping your bluetooth in on mode always then it's going to take extra power so if you are using different different features of your mobile for example if you are using a hotspot okay then a wireless uh, transmitter will be on so it's also going to take extra power so that is how if you are not using uh, such kind of applications then the power can be reduced yes 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 yeah any other way which is 
So do you have any query? Okay. There is no query. Okay, then thank you. Thank you, Deepak Ji. Now I'll. Uh, there is a tea break till eleven twenty. We will reassemble at eleven twenty after tea break. Broadcasting stop.